Hello, welcome to the Know Your Law series where Barefoot Law answers frequently asked questions on the law. Do you have employment issues? Questions about family law, criminal law, land transactions? The answers are right here on the Know Your Law series. sharing the link so I want to welcome you once again thank you for joining and like I mentioned my name is Irene and I'm a lawyer working with Barefoot Law um, peop many people have been reaching out to us at Barefoot Law and some of the questions they have been asking what is mid-term access who qualifies for midterm access. How do I access it? Those are among the questions that we have been receiving at Barefoot Law. At Barefoot Law, our work is to simplify the law, to make sure that everyone understands the law. And that is why today we want to simplify everything to do with NSSF, including midterm. However, we also acknowledge that much as we are lawyers, we don't know everything. Or yes, we might have some knowledge on NSSF and its work, but we can't lie to you that we know, we know it all. So that is why we decided to have this conversation and invite one of the most qualified persons, someone with a vast experience of over 10 years. He has been in the different markets and we believe he is the best person to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Patrick Ayota in this conversation. Uh, Patrick, you're welcome. It's nice to have you here. Thank you, Irene, and thank you, uh, viewers, uh, for this opportunity. I'm really excited to be here. Um, my name is uh, Patrick Ayota. I'm the Deputy Managing Director of NSSF. As many of you may know, NSSF is basically a Ugandan savings pension scheme established by government. And over the last few years, I think we've done a pretty good job of meeting that mandate. Yes. Uh, thank you, Patrick. We are really glad to have you here. We are honored. Mm -hmm. And back to our audience. Please keep sharing the link for those of us, for those of you who are joining us. We are talking about NSF today, especially midterm access. That is one <laughs> thing that is what we want to know today. That is what we want to simplify. We want us to live when we know everything about NSSF. But before we start, please, I would like to encourage you, do not click on that link. And please don't get tired of me mentioning this because I don't want us to be selfish. We want everyone to know this information so that tomorrow you're able to use it to access justice. Remember at Barefoot Law, we are providing free legal information and guidance so that you can use it to access justice. So here is the opportunity for us to know more about NSSF. So let's start. So Patrick. Yes. I know in your introduction you mentioned something to do with NSSF. Mm. Let me 
patient, but you just want to know mm. what will stay the patient. Okay. If you think through a government mm -hmm. has got an obligation to take care of its citizens, security, they have to provide the army, the police. Mm. Also, one of the things that the government has to do under ILO uh, provisions is to make sure that its citizens, once they are done with their working life, can still continue mm. to enjoy a, le a, level of a level of living that's decent. So what you find a government like Uganda did established a number of pension schemes for the public sector. So within the public sector, you've got what's called the government pension schemes. But who have worked in government, when they retire, they're able to draw down a pension. Mm. For the private sector in 1985, the government then enacted a law, the National Social Security Act, which basically tried to cover the private sector. But the difference between the one for the government mm. and the one that NSF has, the one for the government, you don't have to contribute as a member. You work for the government, depending on the number of years you work for the government, there's a formula the government applies when you retire, and they'll give you a pension. Yeah. NSF, on the other hand, is different. You, the member, have to contribute the good thing is the law also forced the employer to contribute on your behalf. Yeah. So whatever you've contributed our hand you have invested, when you retire, that's what you get to take home with you mm -hmm. to make sure that you can now have a retirement. Hopefully, that's a bit decent. Uh, thank you for that elaborated description <coughs> of NSSF. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know you've captured this in, in that description, but for someone out there, mm. someone who is not yet sure, is NSSF the same as pension? Just try to confirm. I know you mentioned that I want, us, I want you to be confirmed or made clear. People get confused. Mm. What defines a pension is the intent of why it was set up. Now, if you think about the intent of this was to help members or Ugandans when they retire to have a decent sort of living. Now, people confuse that with the way it's paid out. Now, for, say, the government, the payment is made on a regular basis every month. You can get to that. And I know it, you get it. Mm. For NSSF, we can give you the lump sum. When you turn 50, we can give you the whole amount at once. At once. So the payment is not what determines whether it's a pension or not. Mm. is what the law was set up for. Okay. So in that case, NSSF is actually a pension scheme. Okay. But it pays mm. lump sum. Lump sum. Yes. Somewhere you mentioned that NSSF is all about to make life better for us when we yes. retire. I don't know when I'm going to retire, but okay, I still have some time. I still have some time, but just in case it comes, and I want to be sure, apart from having a good life after I retire, what other benefits come <coughs> with serving with NSSF? Uh, for for you guys who think that uh, you have a lot, you you will never get there. I'm going to give you statistics so you can you really get this. Mm -hmm. About 20 years ago, uh, when AIDS was at its height, the average lifespan of a Ugandan was 43. 43. Mm -hmm. So people thought that, ah, uh -uh, 55, I'm not going to get there. Yeah. Yes. So we have some good news. The lifespan of a Ugandan today, for male, 62. For females, 64. Now, beyond that, there's what's called the longevity. Mm. For Uganda, it's an additional 15 years. That's why you find somebody who's 62 now, you expect to live for an additional 15 years. You're around 77. Interestingly enough, that's why you find we have our uncles that are still hanging around, they're now 80, they're still strong and so on, because we're actually living longer. So you'll get there. And I'll give you another statistic that will make you interesting. Mm. We pay benefits to our members. We have six benefits. Six. Uh, one of them, is survivor benefit. It's paid to the beneficiaries of members who have died. That number is 3%, okay. which means 97% of the members, if you are listening to me, you have a 97% chance mm. you are going to need NSF because you've lived long enough. Yes. yes.
of the discussion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Patrick, so now that you know that NSSF is very important and it's something that we need, mm -hmm. uh, especially for, that for those of us who are in the private uh, employment, mm -hmm. so we want to know who can save. Okay, okay. I know I've already been mentioning yes. this, yes, but, but who can save the NSSF? Mm. I will begin by answering one of the things that you asked that I didn't. What's the advantage mm -hmm. with the saving of the NSSF? By law, mm -hmm. it was really an amazing structure they had, and this came from all the Commonwealth countries. By law today, an employee, a member, is supposed to contribute 5% towards their retirement. Mm -hmm. If you earn 100K, that means 5,000 shillings you need to set aside with an SSF. But what the government did by law is to force the employer to put 10,000 shillings on your 5K. So you now say 15,000, which is 15% of your pay. Yes, sir. Now, for some of you who are out there and you're very good financial guys and you can do your computation, mm. tell me what business you ha can start today. You put in one shilling and you get two shillings that very day safely. And that's why when people talk about savings and the things that you want to do, your first port of call is actually NSF because you'll if you do not put your 5%, the employer will not put their 10% and you miss out. So it has this advantage that you can leverage mm -hmm. on the employer's contribution and you save. And uh, one of the wonders, the eighth wonders of the world is compound interest. As you earn interest every year and then it's compounded, you won't believe how what the balances look like 15, 10 years, 20 years from now. Okay. Now, who can actually save with an SSF? You've got two basically parts. One, there is what's required by law. Up until January this year, an employer with more than five employees was the one only required to save, to save mm -hmm. that. But you can see it is taking, it was actually disadvantaging people or people who are less than yes. four. Yes, yes. So the law was changed in mm -hmm. January. So now it doesn't matter whether you have got one employee or a hundred. Yes. You as an employer, you are required to contribute to that employee's social security savings. Yes. So now if you work, doesn't matter where, you are required to contribute to, you to the NSSF and your employer mm -hmm. to contribute to NSSF. Now that's the mandatory part. Yes. On top of that, what the law also did for us now, you can say, no, I didn't know, 15% is too small. I want to save more. So you can top up. You can say, I want to send another 1%, 5%, whatever it is. That's voluntary savings. But that would be a private arrangement with NSSF. Yes. With the employer. No, no, that's a private arrangement with NSSF. Yes. Now you can instruct the employer mm. to say, please send to NSF an additional 5%, and they have to comply. Okay. Now you may be on the streets, you're riding, you're about a, about a, mm -hmm. a rider. Say, I want to save with NSF. That's a you, ca you call us, we open an account for you. That's flexible. Now, that one, we don't determine. We agree how much you need to put mm -hmm. in, how frequently you do. For example, if a man has his cows in Barara, he only sells his cows maybe once a year, makes a windfall. So okay, you send it once a year, that's fine. Mm -hmm. We'll keep it for you. Mm -hmm. So now, literally, every Ugandan can save with NSF. Whether following the mandatory path or following the voluntary path. point for us. If you're here, th first of all, thank you for joining us. For those who are just joining us, we are talking about NSSF. And our action point is mm. for us to go back and find out, is our employer contributing exactly. that? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And are you also, as an employee, con co uh, contributing the 5%? Mm -hmm. That is your take home. That is your homework to establish. Mm -hmm. Because according to what Patrick is saying, we are supposed, we are required, if you're employed, to be contributing 15%. 5% mm -hmm. for the employee, 10% for the employer. Mm -hmm. And the good news is, even the broader person, the, oh, not only em employees are required, uh, sorry, not only employees mm -hmm. can save with NSSF. Mm -hmm. So if you're a farmer out there, you're a broader person, and you're not in formal employment, 
you also have the opportunity to save this energy source. Uh -huh. That is what Patrick is yes. telling us this afternoon. Uh -huh. And it's good news. <coughs> it's encouraging yeah. that no one is left, left out. Behind. We are not discriminated. We are all Ugandans and we can benefit from energy source. Yes. And the good news is when we take that money, mm -hmm. we don't just sit on it. Yes. We actually invest it on your behalf. Okay. And every year we give you interest. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the past six, eight years, we've given what's called double-digit interest, over 10%. Mm -hmm. You are hard-pressed. We have pension funds today that come to Uganda to benchmark on us, wondering how do we do it? Why it is that? What, are you, what magic are you guys doing that you can consistently give mm -hmm. members double-digit returns? Discipline. Okay. Something we're very proud of. Okay. And that's now that's improving and I'm um, curious. I feel like finding out my balance, like how much it is right now, because oh. I've been saving for the past four years or yes. three. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, that leads us to the next question yes. uh, about age. Can you save beyond the age you stated at the beginning? Yes. Remember, we said that you have the mandatory yes. path. Yes. Mandatory stops at 55. 55. That is just the requirement to save. Mm. It doesn't mean stop <laughs> saving. It doesn't mean your employer should stop contributing the 10%. Mm. It's just that now that becomes an arrangement, an understanding between you and your employer. Yes. But you can continue saving. Uh, if I give you some numbers that are interesting is, I think we look at the stats about uh, a month ago. We have about 45,000 members over the age of 55 who are still saving mm. with NSSF. So even when you hit 55, I remember I told you you're going to live longer. Yes. So don't stop saving when you get 55 because you still have a long life. To live. To live. Yes. You mentioned that the lifespan is 60. Right now, the lifespan of a Ugandan, 62 for males, 64 for, for females. For females. But beyond that, there's what's called the UN longevity. Mm -hmm. Add another 17 years to that. Yes. And that's basically what you're finding yourself to live in this upper. Okay. Mm. So now that of course i've been saving with my employer and like of course in covid mm -hmm. uh many people lost employment yes. uh, their jobs yes. and so what happens when i lose or when i leave employment is that the end what happens to an employee who leaves w remember the the way the law was set up mm. the law was set up to help you during your retirement so the first the first uh, obligation we have to make sure that when you retire, there is money for you. Yes. Now, things happen in the middle there. But a lot of things that happen in the middle may be temporary, okay. not permanent. Not permanent. Now, for example, something that happens in the middle before you retire could be the member dies. Okay. When the member dies, we have to give the beneficiary whatever we have accumulated to that point. Mm -hmm. If a member becomes disabled, then we give the member her or his because that's a permanent. If the member moves from private sector to government as a permanent move, we give them their money because that's a permanent, uh, uh, a permanent event. If the member leaves Uganda permanently, you can be a Ugandan, you can be an Ugandan, but you left Uganda permanently, we give you your money because that's a permanent event. Most people think that if I lose a job, then I should get NSA, but you know, most job losses are temporary. It's yes, not a permanent yes. event. Mm -hmm. And yet we still have to preserve the mandate we have towards retirement. Okay. So in that case, we will still continue keeping that money for you. Uh, you get another job, you continue contributing. You yes. turn 55, then mm. you come for your money and you get it. Yes. Okay. Mm. Okay, that is quite interesting. So, and but I opening? Yeah, yes. Except mm. on the voluntary plan. Yes. Now, that's mandatory. The voluntary plan is very flexible. Uh, as we start now to put it together, because the law just passed in January, mm. we're going to have where you save based on your goals. I want to save for three years, for five years, for seven years, for health, for education. For so it's very flexible to take care of the, we call them the mid-term events that may occur in your life. Mm. But that one, you fund them on a voluntary basis. Okay. Uh, so you've, be you've been talking about mentioning about the new law yes. uh, that was passed in January. Yes. And so that is leading us to our next discussion. Mm. And it's the main focus for today uh -huh. because it's going to bring in the midterm access. Exactly. So 
Speaking about the new amendment, what is the NSSF amendment mm -hmm. about and why was it necessary? Why come, why make it right now? Why make the changes right now? Like I said, the initial law mm. that established NSSF was made in 1985. Yes. The environment in 1985 was very different, very different from yes. today. Mm. There's a point when that law no longer works. So there was where, beginning about four years ago, began to kind of really face reality. We have a different set of Ugandans. The informal sector is bigger than it used to be. Mm. Uh, so you couldn't, you had to figure out how to bring the informal sector in people have different needs that they needed. So then they had to go and relook at the law and make certain provisions to cater for what's happening in the world today in Uganda specifically. For example, what we just talked about, originally the law looked at employers, only those with five employees. They didn't consider anybody people under four because in those days they were the, the big parastatals. Nowadays there are people who are small business owners. Yes. They're employing less than one, less than, less than five. So the law had to cater for that. So they were actually basically it increases coverage, provides for voluntary savings. The bottom bottom man couldn't save in the old law, and yet they want to save. Mm. So it opened up the space for them. It allowed us now to begin looking at some products we can create uh, that meet member needs. Because part of it is NSF supposed to continuously be relevant to members. Mm. Because members go through different things that happen to them. That's why we come to Militan. Militan was a bit controversial. The first point of it, remember, I said our mandate is retirement. Yes. And the question was, you people take their money now, and then they are still going to live longer, mm. and you basically betraying them. And they may have a need then, but aren't you betraying them? Because they, they're going to come to that point when they need the money, and they don't have it. Yes. So there was that philosophical thought. It was a hard call. Hard call, call exactly. To make, yes. But and yet, coming out of COVID, you really saw people who had gone through a hard time. Yes. And that was why balancing between the needs we saw and this mandate we had, there was actually a consensus that at least let's make provision for mid-term for those who have saved for at least 10 years. It was actually te one to 10 years of contributions and they are 45 years of age. They can actually access some of the money. And uh, that's basically what ended up being. Mm. So now there is that provision at least. Now the provision for all, for some of us who are normal, 45 years, you are at least 45 years of age, and you've made contribution for at least 10 years. 10 years. Then you can come for your 20% contributions. Yes. Now, the good thing is we don't ask you what you're going to be doing with. We give it to you. And uh, we followed up recently. We found out that people who have done wonders with their 20%, but <laughs> who ate all their 20%, but that's a, right, that's a member's right. Y yes. That's, that's <laughs> That's a member's right. Mm. So your work, like you don't follow it up to find out why, <coughs> like what are the members no. using the money for? No, it actually doesn't fall under the scope no of no your work? No, no, no. In mm. other words, what you're going to use it for mm. is not a requirement to access the funds. Yes. Okay. So yes. you can. But we do it for purpose of understanding why. And I'm going to give you two extreme examples. Mm. Uh, this guy had nine million shillings. 20% is 1.8, well, so he applied to get 1.8 million shillings. And I was very keen on following because I had helped him try to access that money. So about two weeks later, I called, I said, okay, so what did you use the money for? Mm. And he told me something that had not even crossed my mind. He said that for the first time in his life, he has got a student who is an S4, mm -hmm. who is an S4, mm. another student who is an S2. Yes. That for the first time, he paid <laughs> all the tuition and he knows his child will not be called to the bus's office and sent home for fees. Now, what do you tell that man? That peace of mind, how, what do you, what, what's the price of that? Yes. It's priceless. It's priceless, yeah. I have another guy. He was very interesting. Apparently, he got uh, 18 million shillings, but there was this business he has always wanted to do. Oh, he loved. He, as soon as he got that money in that business, I talked to him last week. All of it gone. The business has been dead. Mm. But guess what he told me? Now I know I'm not going to touch the other 80%. So even in some time where you think somebody blew it, somebody actually learned a lesson that, you know, some of these uh, business ideas you keep, you have in your mind can be very reckless. Yes, <laughs> so yes, take yes. care for that. Yes. So it has been a, learn a good learning lesson. All of us, and yes. we keep learning. And um, mm. so, but at least the good news is that I can access the 20%. Yes. For me, of course, like I mentioned, 
I've been saving for only four years. <laughs> for only four years. Mm. So I have more six years to go. Yes. According to what you've said, that but if you've been saving for the past 10 years, mm -hmm. then you can access. But you have been 45, but from what I can see, you're 25. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. I'm 25, mm -hmm. according to Patrick, mm -hmm. and that is not in dispute. We mm -hmm. are not. <laughs> <laughs> so you have 20 years. Huh? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You might soon declare me underage. Mm -hmm. But so, and of course, just a reminder that we are talking about midterm access. Uh, we are digesting <laughs> the meaning of midterm access, who qualifies for it, and how can you access it. So, Patrick, what do I need to do to benefit from midterm access? I know some of the things uh, you, you might end up repeating, but it's okay for mm. our audience so that they can understand. The whole information to do with midterm access. So the question is, mm -hmm. what do I need to do to benefit to benefit from midterm access? Okay. Yes. Uh, the good thing is, one of our value proposition as a fund, as an SSF, is convenience. We make it convenient for you mm. to access this money. So, for example, if you have a mobile phone, yes, just dial, and it could be. USSD, now you have the Kabiriti, not even a smartphone, Kabiriti. Star 1, 6, 5, star 6, star 4. Or star 1, 8, 5, star 7, star 5. We'll give you these numbers. I hope you're noting down those okay. numbers, yes. And you'll begin mm. to basically make an application. Or you can go to our website on the internet in the bedroom, and then you just do what? Put in your application. The documentation we need from you basically are going to be you will have need a copy of your national ID and the number. What we do now is we just put your national ID and we verify it with the NIRA and we have your biometrics. Mm. So that's why you can do it from, from the bedroom from your home. We'll need a passport photo. More importantly, we'll need your bank statement. So we because anything over 15 million shillings, if you have a balance over 15 million shillings, you if you think about that, 20% of 15 million shillings is, is what? <laughs> three Let's million. not go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's three million shillings. Three million so if you're going to get anything over three million shillings, mm. we will wire that to your bank account. <laughs> if it is under three million shillings that you're going to get, we can actually put it on your mobile phone. Okay. So we made it convenient Conven for members yes, to basically yes, uh, yes. come for that purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and of course, when you make the process simple, uh, it means that even the people who are not formally employed, the yeah. ones, the border person, the farmer, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, are uh, given the different, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, standards of living, yeah. so they're able to access the money without having yeah. to go through difficulties. Right. Because if you if you make the whole process mm -hmm. hard, some of them are going to lose interest, and mm -hmm. you know they've been saving their money, mm -hmm. and so why should it be so hard to access yeah. access it at a point when they need mm -hmm. it? So I'm glad that the process has been simplified. Yes, what I mm -hmm. tell members that one thing sometimes people don't realize is. NSF is a Uganda-owned fund. Yes. Uganda owned. All the all the top managers from top to bottom are Ugandans. Mm. It's now the largest pension fund. It's the largest financial institution in Uganda. But also, it's one of the most technologically advanced funds. That's why you don't, to register, you don't even need to come to any branch. To contribute, you don't need to come to a branch. To start claiming your money, you don't even need to come to a branch. You can do all that from your bedroom. And that's how easy we've made it. Okay. Everybody. Yes. I remember um, <laughs> for the past three to four years, mm -hmm. but I think I registered in 2015. I was at mm -hmm. UCU. Mm -hmm. uh, the members of NSSF came, came, came around the university yeah. and I was able to, to register. register. And I've never registered again. So that means it was. Yeah, the process done. was legal mm -hmm. and yeah, it was implemented. Yeah, so uh, I know you mentioned this, but how much of that money can you access? Like, how much of the money can I access at what? At the uh, mid term, we mid are still focusing mm -hmm. on mid term, mid -term. is 20 percent of whatever percent. balance you have. If you have 10 million shillings, 10 percent of 10 million is two million. Two million, million. yes, you have a billion shillings. 20% of a billion shillings is 200 million shillings. Do you have members who have a billion? <laughs> Just. <laughs> we have members with hey. close to 2 billion shillings. Wow. 
Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, please keep the questions coming in. And the conversation is still ongoing. Please remember to share the link. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And I think it will be easy to share the link if you go to our Facebook page pages and YouTube. It will make it easy for you to share that link so that we can all benefit from this conversation. So some of the questions that that came in from our beneficiaries, mm -hmm. you know, we work in a way that people reach out and ask, you know, what is this in terms of legal, you mm -hmm. know, uh, yeah. yeah aspect so then we are able to mm -hmm. respond mm -hmm. by simplifying and making sure that they understand yeah. so some of the questions came in mm -hmm. and one of the questions was okay we talked about like the employer is supposed to contribute 10 percent mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and even now with the recent amendment it means that even when I'm on one employee mm -hmm. the employer has the responsibility exactly. not that duty actually yes to contribute the 10 percent and i'm going to tell the legal fraternity please legal fraternity take care of your employees yes because uh, I, so you try to classify them as contractors independent but when you can test it and find that these are actual employees <laughs> <laughs> yes yes please so mm. uh so <laughs> someone said that um suppose my employer is not doing it yes. he's not contributing i'm yes. working for the person yes. and have been there for years and are not contributing yes. what should I do we actually have a whistleblower policy yes we have a number an 800 number send us an email or walk in and just tell us I work for so and so they've not been contributing it would help if you bring to us some proof for example your pay slip you show that there's a pay slip we don't see that the employer deducted your five percent mm. oh they deducted but we can see now since they never sent it mm. under whistleblower policy you have complete anonymity and that's how we'll take it and then we begin as a fund go and investigate and normally we'll find out that the employer has not been paying for a long time and by law we penalize them they have to pay all the interest all the back interest but normally if they cooperate we reduce the penalty the one thing we cannot reduce is the principal due to you and the interest due to you for however long that employer has not paid. They have to pay that because that's your money. Yes. Yeah. So, and it, I think that also captures Caesar uh, from Facebook was asking, do I write NSSF or request <coughs> verbally NSSF to sue the employer? We, we don't start with suing. Yes. You come in, say this, my employer has not say well, the employer, where was the employer? And that's, that's it's, it's helpful for you to bring us your pay slip so that you can actually have some paper that tells us he has not what? Paid. Paid. Mm. Because what happens normally is they know we are going to go. Guess what the first thing that disappears? Payroll records. That's why if you bring us yours, now we have yours, we can start from there. But we do it in such a way that we protect you as a whistleblower. Uh, so how do you do that? How am I protected? Because remember how we how the job market is in Uganda, the sector, it makes you vulnerable. So at the end, you don't want to lose this small job that you have, you know, you're earning from it. So mm. if I'm going to report my employer and he finds out that Irene reported me to NSSF, so what kind of protection mm. do you... Because when we go there, mm. we don't go there and tell him Irene reported. Oh, Irene said, oh, we are looking for Irene's payroll. No. There's, there are places where we've gone, shut up, right in the morning. Yes. With policemen. And you account how many people. You, as you stand, you can actually see which workers are getting in there. So, okay, you sh so many people are checking today. Show us your payroll. And say, general application. Because yes. it's not just you. Mm. They've done the same to others. So, it's a general application. And then you then carry out. We have a whole compliance team that does audits and follows it up and follows the paperwork. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. That's great. So at least we are sure of protection. Mm. Please reach out to NSSF if your employer is not contributing to your NSSF. Remember, it is for your own pr benefit mm. when you retire. In so fact, the mm. other thing that we found out very interesting is we now have got we most members. If we have your true number, every month that you send us the contribution, we send you an acknowledgement. Mm. 
Yes. You've received I your think I received uh -huh. that alert, yes. You've received your money. The reason why we did that was not just to let you know, but if you don't get that message, guess what most people are trying to do? They go straight to their payroll office. Did you send in my contribution? So what we've seen compliance has actually risen because employees who are not getting that those messages are going back to their payroll office. Did you send my money? And it's working very well. On the other hand, there's something that's very interesting. We found out there were some men who were maybe telling their women, you know me, I only make a million shillings. One day the woman falls on that uh, message no. and she calculates, hey, Sib, this thing shows that uh, you should be making 15 million shillings. The first month, you have a bonus. But the, you can't do that. You can only get a bonus one month. <laughs> Two, three months later, you're in trouble. <laughs> they came and told her, oh, no, please don't send me any more messages. And say, no, my friend, that's your domestic affairs. You're not going to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Nicholas from Facebook was asking, and this has been responded, he has been working for about three years with a company, but when he went to check on his balance at NSSF, mm -hmm. he was told that his company has been defaulting has been defa defaulting okay. and was asking what should he do and I think yeah Nicholas if you've got even a record of your pay slip mm. that shows they actually paid you either deducted or did not deduct please come go to any branch and actually lodge that as a claim and we follow it up or come up here we have a whole desk that actually will follow up for you on that matter okay uh, so someone also asked something that we talked uh, that you shared. How and when do I get my NSSF money when I join public service? Oh yeah. Yes. We try to. We are trying. We have a turnaround time of eleven days. Right now we are running about eight days on average. One of the trickiest one we found is the we call the exempted employment benefit. Somebody was in the private sector they go join the government. We learned through trial and error. Some people would leave the private sector but never join public the service. public service. Yes. And they want their money. Their money. Hmm. So we put that in. You have to prove to us that at least you're on government payroll when you get there. I won't name the companies, but this guy resigns from uh, the private sector goes to one local government, I won't name the name, he registers there as a sweeper. He was a manager. Okay. Hires somebody else mm -hmm. to show up there and be cleaning for, for six months. The cow is as happy as can be. The, we got a man who is a good cleaner. He is so good. But he had hired somebody to do what? To do it. To replace him. Mm. Well, that meant that now, we're a bit more cautious. We kind of follow up and realize that, uh-uh, guys were just conning us without knowing. So now, when you put in a, a claim under excellent employment that you are now working with the public government, we'll give you about six months. We'll come find out, because we have branches. They'll come and are you the one who is there? Really, is it you? Because the other thing that you wonder, if you're a manager in a very good company here, how do you get a job as a sweeper in a local government? Something doesn't add up in that area. So now we've investigated a little bit more on that area. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think these two questions will be combined. Mm -hmm. uh, one, can someone receive my NSSF benefit on my behalf? I think there are two things here. Like I'm still alive. Mm? But I'm asking, can someone receive it on my behalf? Because there's also uh, that part when someone has died, yes. and we, we're also asking, can my family members receive or get the NSSF? The so I think we start with the first one. Yeah. Can someone receive my NSSF benefit on my behalf? We are, we are assuming I'm still alive, and I want to know. There are only two circumstances where that can occur. Mm. One is fraud. For some reason, somebody has forged there was an interesting case in Ujinja involving a spouse. They faked the husband's death. He was still alive. And it came through the system. Death certificate. But people are doing court it. orders. Yes. <laughs> and she was the beneficiary. This money, and yes. she goes to, and then she applied. Mm. They what was interesting that before the man was released, mm. one of the children found out and alerted us. 
and where they are with the police, and they're, and they're all there. The husband was there, the wife was there, they are recently. They were looking for money. So where is fraud, where there is fraud and collusion? Something. But uh, typically, no. The second one was actually genuine. During COVID, remember the COVID bills were so high. Yes. I mean, people who had been in hospital, COVID bills were high. So somebody can be in hospital, he has got uh, a bill of 30 million shillings. And this was happening. And they have 100 million shillings here. So that is one of the things that we said we needed to do to help members out. Right? In that case, the member is in the ICU. Yes. You can't go there you and can't get yeah. what? Mm. And get, um, get, get their sign off and things like that. What we did was to give the hospital what we call a letter of undertaking. That when this person recovered, they would then sign over the portion of needed to pay off the bill. So now that's where we paid a third party, but because we had consent from the, from, fr the fr from the from the member when they were okay, but there are times when the member passed on, they didn't recover, in which case then that became, re then became what we call the survivor, and they worked out how to pay that one. So those so one is fraud, then the other one is where there was a deliberate intent because physically, you could not do anything with the member because it's nice to you covered, nobody can even go there. So you had to find a way of making sure that the hospital took care of them by us giving the hospital a letter of undertaking that they would be they would paid. They yeah. would be able to. Yeah. So someone is in ICU, of course, at that point, that between you know the point yeah. of death and yeah. being alive, so they can't literally do anything. No. But then you give assurance. You there is a letter from NSSF yes. assuring the hospital that the member has money. Has money, please. Yeah. Yeah, treat take, the member. Treat the member. Mm -hmm. What we are interested in is for uh, the member to, to be, be okay. to be healthy. Yes. That is, I think that is a good take home. Mm. Yes. So, what happens when I've died? Okay. First thing that happens, you know, your lawyer. God forbid, I'm not dying no, no. today, but yeah. what happens when I die? Two things that we found out, which is kind of interesting, is, um, for example, most members, and please lawyers help us. Most people die interested. They li don't leave a will behind. Yes. And you know, once you don't leave a will behind, the state, the s uh, what, whatever, what survivor, whatever that t that law takes care of. We have to go to the administrator to make sure that things are lined up, and the courts determine who the beneficiaries are. There is normally a preference or priority given to the children and the widow, or the widows of the deceased, or the widow of the deceased. So the priority in terms of payment, that's what the succession. Uh, no, let, let us do. So we wait until all that process has gone through and then the administrators show up, they show us the letters of administration that has come through and then we pay whoever the letter of administration told us. That's if a member dies without a will. Mm. And also if the will, if the will is contested, it has to go through that process so that we can actually do it. Now some members are very interesting and I tell guys, please, you, for example, you, you, you registered in 2015. Yes. Let's just assume for that purpose there's this sweetheart of yours called John. Mm. You thought that you and John were going to just die together. So you put John as your beneficiary. But in 2020, that John is now Paul. But you forgot that you put John as your beneficiary. And things go on and on and something happens. Now suddenly, John shows up. I'm the one on the paper there. Uh, Paul also shows up. You can see the movie. That way. Yes. So guys, update your records. That's really the point is. All your events, your children, update so that it becomes very easy to administer uh, your benefits mm. according to your will. Yes. yes. So, uh, what you're trying to say is that uh, if a person has died and mm. has <coughs> left no will behind, yes. what the administrator needs is the letters of, of administration. administration. Any yes. other document that you need? Usually, because remember, all of, the, all, of, all, all of it is going to come through the court system. The letters of administration and the letter of administration will basically tell us who the beneficiaries are, how to distribute the benefits. Do That's you your need a death certificate? Oh, yeah, all that's packed. I mean, it's by the time you get here, it's yes. part of your whole uh, proof that you need to get in that case. Oh. All that, yes. Yes. But the, let me tell you, okay, guys, I'm going to tell you something, please. I know we Ugandans are so scared. So, me, I can't make a will. So, man, uh, if I make my will now, that's just a curse on me. Mm. Well, it's an uh, abomination the in the some of our cultures. Uh, the first will I made, mm. I was uh, 25 years old, <laughs> and I'm still walking alive and well. I've not died. So, guys, don't leave us with your mess because you didn't make up a will. Now, you may say, but I don't have anything. You won't believe what you have. You actually have a, You may have a lot that you don't know that you have. Yes. You are thinking that you think you don't have a lot. 
Hey, check, you may even have a child that we know about we don't know about. But that day other children should please acknowledge so we know. Otherwise you cause problems for who are living behind. So please write away. <laughs> Uh, Patrick is advocating <laughs> <laughs> for wills to be written, and this is something we have always done. We have always encouraged, told our beneficiaries mm. to write the will. Yes. Writing the will doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to die. Yeah. Anyway, we are all going to die at some point, mm -hmm. but writing it at that point doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you're going to die. Don't wait, mm -hmm. you know, and see when you're about to die. You might even be declared that you're incapable of yeah, writing right, yeah, one. Yeah. So you better write, do this when you're still healthy, you mm -hmm. know, when you're still in the right mind, mm -hmm. so that you can save us from some of the dangers mm -hmm. or the problems that we go through, including that time when it comes to accessing exactly. your NSSF. Exactly. Yes. In fact, one of the things that happens, uh, one, of the, one of the things that men tell is that, ah, if she finds out how much money I have and I'm leaving it for her, won't she kill me? Oh, okay, write the will. Don't show it to her. Give it to, give it to your pastor if you have two. Give it to your friend, two copies for them to keep. You can do these things. So if you're scared of her finding out, you can do, you can manage that. Yes. Mm. So uh, an interesting question is here. What if my employer deposits only 5% and doesn't contribute his 10%? Is it a crime? We go for him. It's a crime. Mm. We go for him. We go for that 10% on the other half. Okay. Yes, it's a crime. But is that 5% allowed in the system? Like No, now the problem is with mm. the system, the system will not allow you. Yes. Because now the system is automated. Yeah. It's expecting 15%, so it will reject it. So you'll be non-compliant for the whole amount. Okay. And now because we've automated most of the things, now we can actually follow them month to month if they should have sent money for that purpose. Okay. So... Another interesting question, how do I keep track of my NSSF savings? I think we answered that, there is a message, but just to I make hope, it clear to I hope we have, if we don't have your account number that is, uh, if we don't have your telephone number, please just go to a nearest branch and update and give us your new telephone number. And every month as your contributions come, we'll send to you a message that will go to your contribution. Or you can actually dial a number, the numbers that I read before, uh, and those numbers will walk you through. You put your NSSF number, there's a passcode, and you'll find how much money you have with us yes. in that case, yes. So one way you can do that is you can receive message alerts on your phone. So please update NSSF about your current numbers. I know we keep changing numbers. So please do so, so that you can track mm -hmm. uh, your NSSF savings. So... The NSSF app, hmm? yes. is, does it exist? Is it functional? Yes. How does it work? It's an app. Yes. Um, this last two, we, we, we changed system, and I need to apologize to members for that. Uh, in January, actually December, we cut over to a new system. The apps had, a lo they, were not, they were not stable, but the app now are running. Basically, it's a simple app. You, once you press on it, put in your NSSF number, it will show you what we have with, for you. But also, it has an interesting thing. It can, you can play what, what I call the what-if scenarios. It can say, okay, if you increase your savings, mm. and we give you this interest rate, you can actually see how much money you would expect under that scenario. What does that mean? Now it makes you, it allows you to create your own future. Say, hey, I need to save more, because when I save more, I'm going to have a better balance at the end. So it has got a future that allows you to do what if scenarios based on what you want to do, what I which I think is a quite a cool a, a cool future for that matter. Yeah, especially for the tech best mm -hmm. generation like yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for simplifying mm. our, our our lives. Mm. We really don't like difficult things. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, someone has asked us another interesting question here. How do how do you access NSSF fund to back your mortgage loan request uh we don't that law we actually now just designing the regulation for that mm. the idea behind it is if a member has a hundred million shillings with us he can then come here we write a letter once the regulation is done goes to the bank presents the bank because the law will allow you to use up to half of that balance as collateral it's not that you'll take the money from here to the bank. The bank will know if anything goes wrong and you exhaust all options.
the final fallback position is half of your balance. Now use the word carefully, the final option after you've exhausted all because we don't want you to just say, I'm going to get money and default because I have my NSSF. Okay. No. So the bank has to do the very due diligence they're doing in terms of making sure the property is insured, mm -hmm. make sure that all the due diligence that needs to be done has been done. They, once even you default, they've been trying to sell that house. If they can't recover the full amount, then the full back position is what you pledged. We think that does two things. Because bank says, Ugandans are too risky. We can't lend them money. Hopefully by putting this additional collateral, it de-risks us in front of the bank. So maybe they could reduce the interest rates a little bit. Or instead of asking you to put a down payment, which normally is a bottleneck. For example, if you're buying a, ho a home for 150 million shillings and they need 20% down, that's 30 million shillings. It is very difficult for someone to have saved with that. Hopefully they can lower those thresholds because now there is more comfort for a bank to lend you than it was before that mm. uh, law. Okay. So, uh, b from your explanation, I'm picking out that uh, that's one of the use, the advantage of saving yes. within SSF. Yes. And I'm looking forward to that regulation. I hope yeah. it can, you know, Good. be implemented so yeah. that we can make use of yeah, I think of so the too. fund to do things yeah. like mortgages, yeah. you know, and be able to benefit from yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, someone has asked us that you repeat the numbers that you gave us earlier. Okay. Yes. So, these mobile phone numbers, USSD, if you, if you have the smartphone, most likely you have an app. But if you don't have an app, you're using a USSD. Uh, I believe under MTN to the star 165 star 6 star four, okay. star one six five, star six, star four, hash. If you have MT, if you have Airtel, it is the star one eight five, star seven, star five, hash. One B caveat, that number must be registered in your name. Your name. Because part of the security feature we have is we check your name with NIRA, we check that phone number with the telecoms. So it must, it must be consistent with the information you've given those telecom companies. You can't use your friend's phone number to try to access your funds. But some Ugandans, not all Ugandans have the national identity. But it's a law now, every Ugandan must have the, you see, that's the whole point. Every Ugandan must have a national ID. Yes, so it's so not an excuse. No, it's not. Actually, we Ugandans have too many excuses. It is now the law. Why we? Why don't you have one? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so please, um, yeah. let's be responsible citizens and yeah. ensure that we, are, we have our IDs with yeah. us. So, Patrick, uh, I know we are winding up, or yeah. we are about to wind up. Uh, please keep the questions coming in, the comments, the questions. We shall be able to answer them as long as time allows. So we know that NSSF is an innovator and mm. is always coming up with improvements to, to the way it operates. Some yeah. of the improv improvements, you've mentioned them here, which yeah. is quite exciting. So what else is new at NSSF that you think the public may okay. need to know about? We one of the things that we think about as NSF is this thing about creating our own future. In other words, we'll not sit back and think that a member is going to come to us. So we have this thing about what are the barriers to savings? And we identified the two. One is, I call them, the willingness to save. In other words, some people do not know enough mm. that they need to save. So we have what we have a big financial literacy program that we run by there during COVID, over two million Ugandans access that material online. But even now, now we have tracks for teachers and so on, just to go through what the financial pa pa finances are. As, as remember, coming through P1 to P7, S1 to S2, S1 to S4, or to S6, uh, then year one to year four, year three, we taught everything. We taught biology, law, we taught uh, chemistry, math, but never, nobody taught us about personal finances. It's a gap. It's a gap. It's so a we finish, we stop to work, and mm. we have no idea what it's all about. And saving is not about how much money you make. There are people who make 
10 million shillings. We have, we have managers in the fund who make 10 million shillings and is renting. We have drivers who make 1 million shillings and they've built. It's not about how much money you make. Sure. It's how much you save out of what you make. Yes. yes. So, they w so we have a whole financial literacy program that we go. But now, on top of it, the other barrier that we have is what I call the ability or capacity to save. Somebody wants to save, but they don't have the capacity to save. So one of the programs we have called now is called the High Innovator Program. We started as an experiment. Many of you remember about three weeks ago there was an article, I think the monitor says 700,000 people enter the workforce every year. 90, only 90,000 get employed, which means the unemployment rate in this country is so high. Yes. So what we did was to set up an, a, a program to try to see, can we help people who have good ideas develop businesses so they can create jobs for people? Mm. So we looked at the ecosystem of uh, how jobs are created, and we kind of divided it into four times, and I'm just going to make it uh, simple. Ideas are, someone has a wonderful idea, he pilots it, can it work? Then he commercializes it. Will somebody pay for it? Will somebody pay money for it? And then finally, if all those three are lined up, you scale it. In the scaling place, there's enough money. Banks are there waiting. They will give you money. In the commercial stage, there's some money, private equity, venture capital. Guess what? In the idea area, there's enough money. In Kampala today, you have a wonderful idea. There are 24 business incubation hubs. You can go there. Guess what the problem is? In the pilot stage, we call it the valley of death. There is no money. So all the good ideas fall off. Okay. So what we did was say we want to intervene in that area. And we borrowed a model from the US. Many of you, I don't know if you had a, a company called Y Combinator. Y Combinator was a very interesting idea. It got involved in that space, startups. And it was only investing $25,000. So, okay, you have a wonderful idea. Okay, let's experiment with it and see what happens. Okay. And they did. Twelve years later, some of the brand names we use in this country, in the world today, came from there. Uber, WhatsApp, Reddit, Dropbox, you name it. These guys came, these wonderful global brands, came because somebody was willing to just spend $25,000. Risk $25,000. So we've come that part in Uganda. In, in Canada. So that program, we're now running it. We, ru we did our first cohort. Interestingly enough, what we found out that when we did the pilot, most of, most of the entrepreneurs are very tunnel visioned. Eh? I have an app. I'm designing an app. So he's drawing up an app. He knows how it works. But he doesn't know who is going to use it, mm. who the customers are, what mm. he needs to price, who is going to help him do. So he doesn't know that there are other aspects of business that he needs to pull together to make that idea work. So that pilot showed us. So we've created a module. We call it the Business Academy. Right now you can actually go in it. And you can basically, it's actually if you go to nssfug.org, uh, you go on that and then you go to the High Innovator Program. Mm. And you so you go there, there's an eight module program. And we basically, you learn about your own business, what you're doing, what you need to be doing, what you're doing. And it covers everything, marketing, management, uh, strategic thinking, finance. Uh, product, customer, it covers all those things. So by the time you're done with it, you kind of have a good idea what you need for that. Our first run, we had 1,900 entrepreneurs go through that. Okay. We funded the first 27 mm. in, the in, this in, in, yeah, in uh, February. That's the pilot, the yes. Pi no, no, mm. no, no that, that was the first cohort after the pilot. Yes. So we opened the second cohort, which is going on right now. We have 5,600 as of yesterday entrepreneurs enrolled on it. Mm. We hope we're going to fund 100, okay. which is uh, uh, in August. What we noticed to know that the participation rate from female was not 27%. So in November, we are going to run an all-female cohort, female-owned, female-managed, female-led businesses. So that we can, and what are we investing in them? Once the ID, we invest up to $30,000. $30,000? Yes. That's 100 million shillings. Yes. And the money is flexible. I can tell you what some of the guys have used the money for. There's a, a guy who has got a beef. He, he was packaging bee, uh, honey in northern Uganda. He just needed a, he needed a machine to just automate that process, $15,000. And he's exporting the, that honey to southern Sudan today. So it's that flexible. 
if you are ideal. But you have to go have the discipline to go through the modules mm. and go through that. And hopefully somebody takes a chance on you and in the next 10 years you become the big Madivanis, you become the big because somebody invested in you. And that we are so excited about that. The goal is to fund 500 startups over the next five years. Next five years. And I yes. hope you guys listening become one of those. I'm sure they're listening and uh, <laughs> they're excited. So just to be sure, this is not alone. High Innovator Program oh. is not alone. No, 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 no. Mm. Let me take it. Let yes. me take back. What we want people to know is not free money. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do. We agree with you. For that money we are giving you, we'll take the option of 6% of your company. 6% of your company. Your ownership. Yes. We'll take that option. But the good news is this. Will take seven years or ten years to exercise that option, but for each one fifty million shillings you grow by, we'll dilute ourselves. Does that make sense? In other words, right now you're a startup. You can tell me my company is worth a million dollars. No, you're a startup. Forget that. You have you have no idea what you're talking about. With the time, as you begin to grow, there will be value in that company. But for each growth, we reduce the option that we'll take. So when we exercise it, suppose you grew by um, a billion shillings. A billion shillings divided by 150 is 6%. So basically, we take ourselves from 6% to 2% automatically. So we reduce the ownership we have in you. The idea is, the idea is to tell you that once we put money in you, we are married for a long time. We are not walk away. We are not, <laughs> legal we, we, are, we, we are not a development partner who mm. is just going to give me and walk away. Uh -uh. No, we are married. We need to make you make sure this thing works because we are it's investing in you. It's not Kameza money. Uh -uh, it's not. Okay. There's nothing like you, free money. Mm. Because that's the other thing, most people think that it's free. It's no free money. And by the way, equity is more expensive than debt. Mm. For lawyers, I don't know whether, they, whether they've told you that. But you learn to do these things because we are with you. Why? Because within one year, we want you to pitch your idea to a venture capitalist or venture. So now maybe the guy can put $100,000 in you or $200,000. So we want to stay with you and you attract enough capital. We, we brought in on, 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 on board now Equity Bank. Centenary Bank, ABSA, UDB, uh, Stanbic, uh, Abia, Abia Trust. So once you go through, our you can actually access flexible loans for that. Because we want to remove the barrier. You're saying that there is no There is money. Okay. The only problem is there is money. Either your idea is not good enough or your idea is not packaged well enough. That's it. But there's enough money. If you're disciplined, it will be there. And then the thing that we, th we learned about Ugandans, ah, this is my business. Me, I, ah, ah, I can't let you come in. Me, I want 100% of my business. But my friend, you may own 100% of 10 million shillings. Or you may own 50% of 10 billion shillings. Where are you better off? So, <laughs> uh, to be sure that I don't need to be a member in order to benefit or to participate in these cohorts that are uh, all the high innovator program? In most cases, you're not even a member. You are broke, you're trying to set up a business, you, but we require when you join, mm. you register. You register and exactly. become because a member. A member. Because we are creating our future mm. in you. But we don't expect you to be a member. So, uh, Just to make sure that uh, nothing is left out, what happens if I fail to pay? Because uh, you the know. business I'm not being pessimistic. No, 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 no. Yes. You're right. Yeah, but what happens? No, we gambled with you. Remember, we did, we did, what we took, we don't take the 6% up front. Uh -uh. We take an option to convert it to ownership. Mm. Okay, in financial terms is, I have the right to convert to that. Now, seven years later, you've collapsed. We just say bye-bye, shake hands, you go. No problem. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> so please, uh, we hope that you can we you can have more yeah. members coming up to subscribe, especially yeah. women. Now that we have the yeah. the one coming up for, for females, yes. which month? It's going to be. In, but we we'll we we'll open that call. We'll open the modules. I believe in November. You, this one we won't splash. There'll be a lot of just people. Let people look at we look at the papers, the TV, radios because we want to bring in. We actually deliberately want to. If we can bring in 10,000 women to go through that course and fund 200, mm. I'll be the happiest guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Patrick. Um, when we talked about midterm, there's something I feel like we left out. 
uh, on our way to to, to off to NSSF, mm -hmm. uh, we saw a signpost mm -hmm. uh, talking about smart cards. Yes. Yes. So we're just wondering, how does it work? Smart what is it? Okay, I have a smart card here. Okay. What we've done with the smart card is basically, is you have, if you go to Centenary Bank, they will give you your debit card, which has a Visa logo, which means it's Visa enabled. The idea is if you have money in that account, and you go to any Visa ATM, you should be able to use it. You go to a point of sale in Visa, say, uh, you go to Carrefour, where they go to Nairobi, as long as you have money, you can use it. What we've done is to take that same concept, but add it to things to it. Yes. So it's an SSF card. Now we are working in collaboration with the Centenary Bank. As soon as you get that card, you have two options. You can preload money on that card directly. From your NSSF account or from, from the bank? No, no. Mm. Your NSSF account. When we send you money, we can put money directly on that card. Yes. Or you can do it on from your uh, money, mobile money uh, phone. You can mm. put there. Or you can open up an account in Centenary Bank and you have it as a debit card. Yes. So you can use it. So it comes with that functionality. What we've added on it is the ability now you can use the same card. If you go to a Visa enabled ATM, you can tap on it and should be able to show you your statement. More importantly, is loyalty. We are signing up a number of vendors. You can get up to 22% from buying land, 15% buying building materials, whatever it is, by just saying you're a member of an SSF. So it has got loyalty points, yes. it has got a transaction future, and then it has got the NSF functionality that you may need in that case. Okay. So now that is the first one in Africa. So first one in Africa. First one for a pension fund, we think of it. So that's why I mentioned that uh, we know NSSF as you know why one of the leading innovators. Yeah. In not only in Uganda now it turns out even in oh yeah. in Africa. Oh yeah. So this is quite mm -hmm. exciting, and I hope the members can take it on and make mm -hmm. use of the smart exactly. cards for those ones who qualify mm -hmm. for mid term. No, no, Access. but they, no, anybody can, if you're already a member, mm. if you go to a centenary bank, because uh, they're producing it there, you can actually go to a centenary bank branch and see you're an NSA member, and they'll produce the bank for you, the, the card for you. You don't is have to wait until... Is it only to do with, uh, with centenary bank? Yeah, so far, that's the only bank we've signed. Okay. So you, there are two pl places, either centenary bank branch, actually we've opened up a centenary bank branch downstairs on the first floor. On so this you can yes. on this building. But with time it will be expanded yeah, exactly, to, to other banks. To yeah, other exactly. banks. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um I think those were the questions from our audience. And so Patrick, what's the last thing? What do you think we should we should know, we should live without knowing? Ninety eight percent of Ugandans when they reach the age of 55, the only savings they have, the only liquid savings they have is NSSF. So guys, take interest in doing it. Take interest in saving. This exponential growth of money, compound rate of interest, is incredible. We did some numbers. When you save with NSF about 20 years, and someone say, ah, 20 years is long. If you're 25 years now, that's 45. You'll be 45 anyway. And like I say, you're not going anywhere. We found out that the balance you have there 10%, no, 15% was what you put in. 30% is what the employer put in for you. The other 60% is the interest NSF put in there. So it makes it worth it. Make, as, as you do your planning for your life, whatever, as you plan on getting married, as you begin saving with NSF because it will makes, it makes a difference in anybody's life. And do not, don't worry about, and then get involved because it's your money. Yes. Don't get involved. Get, in, get to know what we are doing. You raise noise if you think we're doing things that are wrong. Because that's the only way you'll keep us in check. Because it's your money. So this thing of saving the NSF, please do it. Le let it be part of your financial planning. Even if you think about buying land, you're buying cows, fine. But save. There is no way you'll ever put five shillings and gain ten shillings that same day. Nowhere. Nowhere. So, and that reminds me, when we talk about the voluntary saving yes. part, mm. it reminds me of what the most insurance companies are doing. Yes. F is it the same thing? No. Wh what we're doing is, what we're doing with the, actually one of the things we're going to do is, when we open up that voluntary space, mm. we know that you need more than to save. 
using the law of numbers, we already approached some of these uh, insurance companies. For example, there's a product going around where they're asking member uh, some to, to pay 3,500 shillings for them to get medical uh, cover. Maybe a, a one million shilling cover, or if, if they die, maybe two million shillings. We can, because we have numbers, we can now go to the same insurance company and say, listen, why don't you give us at 2,000 shillings? Yes. Now, you can say 5,000 shillings with us, but 2,000 shillings gives you medical cover. And we've taken care of an issue that people are struggling with. They get sick and they have no money to get treatment. So it will be where we put together packages for members for that purpose. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Patrick. This has been a fascinating discussion. I've been able to learn a lot. And um, our viewers or to our audience, just a recap of what we have been talking about. We have been talking about NSSF. It's a legal entity, first of all. It's not a scammer. It's not <laughs> masquerading. And uh, basically, you can... There is mandatory saving and also voluntary saving. Mm -hmm. So if you're under private employment, your employer is supposed to contribute 10% and then you as an employee, 5%. Mm -hmm. Now previously, it was mandatory. For in order for the employer to contribute, they had, they had to be more than five employees. That has changed. That you will be operating under the old law. According to the new law, even if you're one employee, it is mandatory for that employer to make the contribution. Mm -hmm. I think that is quite exciting. And for s most of us, this gives us hope. It's an action point. I hope we can pick it up from there. So secondly, mid-term, the one that came about mm -hmm. that, in, that was in social media, today we know that to qualify for mid-term, first of all, you must be 45 years mm -hmm. old. Then you must have saved for a period of over 10, ten years. years. So, if you're 45 and above, and you've saved for a period, a period of more than 10 years, feel free to approach NSSF so that you access 20% of your funds. Mm. I th and if they, for some of them who think that, mm, I think they paid. Mm. Between March, because the law passed and began paying in March, between March and June, end of June, we paid 443 billion shillings to 22,000 members under midterm. So it works. Actually, yes. many people <coughs> will, d will be doubting, many yeah. Ugandans, you know, I think we are used to being scammed or mm -hmm. to, you know, so there is, there will be that section opposing, yeah. like it's very hard to get that yeah. money. Saving is easy, mm. but when you, the time comes for you to get your money, it is very hard. But, mm. well, you're hearing from Patrick, many people have been yeah. able to access that money. So, and I know, of course, our Time is fast spent. Uh, we have three minutes to four. But in case you're there and you have a question or you feel like there's something that you need clarity on, I think please get back to Barefoot Law. We are still here. Mm. We are still doing the work that we do, simplifying the law, responding to all your queries. So please reach out to us on the different contacts that are running, I'm sure, on the screen down. So you can call us on 0392-177-405 and speak to a lawyer directly. Or you can send us an inbox on Facebook. You can also send us a message on Twitter. Or you can also reach out to us on the SMS platform. Kindly do so and we shall be able to, to respond to you. It's not only the NSSF things that we respond to. Anything to do with the law. As long as you have a legal issue, please reach out and we shall be able to guide you so that has been it for today thank you for joining us thank you for being patient and we are hoping that you've learned a lot from this discussion because i as an individual have been able to do so patrick thank, thank you for giving us your time i know you're a very busy man but you've sacrificed no. two of your hours no, for this this. This, so is, this is part of the job. This so is part Irene, of the job. Thank you for having me and viewers, the audience. Thank you for listening. Yes. And uh, if you have any questions regarding the fund, this is Uganda owned. If you're a member of NSF, you're really my boss. So walk in here and uh, ask a question. I'm your boss. <laughs> I'm yes. your boss. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you, Patrick. I think that's how the environment is. Very easy for any of us to access it. Please feel free. Much as mm. NSSF appears to be in some, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
mm. long building for some of us. Mm. Please feel free to access it anytime and you'll be able to be hel helped. Mm. So that, uh, that is it for today. Thank you Thank for you. joining. We just want to wish you a great weekend. And remember, Barefoot Law is here for you to make the law easy for you. Thank, Thank you, you Thank for you. joining us. <laughs>